Hello everybody, how's it going? And welcome to the first part of a tutorial series that a fair few people have actually kind of asked for and I felt like it might be a good idea to do simply because I have done the basics tutorial for 2020 before. Uh, however, it was a very basic, quick going over and there's a lot of things that I kind of either skimmed over or missed entirely uh, that were either not necessarily uh, uh, n needed to actually get uh, most of your enjoyment of this game and be able to understand it, but would be useful to know. Now, the first part, of course, uh, is going to be setting up a single-player game, what all the options and stuff mean, and what they um, can do for you to kind of switch your game up a little bit. So, uh, there is a tutorial in this game. Uh, it's okay. Um, I don't really recommend it, but for the most part, you're just going to be going clicking on single player and then you come with these options load is for games you have saved which will be shown in a later video how to save games it's pretty simple uh, there's campaign and scenario uh, I'm going to go scenario here so if you click on scenario there are lots of options here in the list for scenarios there's some custom ones that are downloaded with the uh, 6.8.1 so they should automatically be on your system there are some for just 2020, and there are some for Global Crisis, which was uh, an expansion pack on the game, uh, I think a year or so after its release. So clicking on these brings up their uh, scenarios. So for example, if you click on Cuban Cigars, you play as Cuba, and it tells you what you have to do. Uh, you have to take over the D Dominican Republic. So pretty straightforward. Some of them are a bit more complicated. Some of them are hard. Some of them are easy. Uh, this one's kind of hard because Senegal has, like, no units or money. So <laughs> it's a bit more difficult uh, to do. So if we return to menu, then there's also campaign. Campaign is very, very simple. Uh, in your regular game, it will have just Global Crisis, Shattered World, and World 2020. After World 2020 and Global Doom are mods. Global Doom is what I play Fascist Italy series on, for example. Uh, After World 2010. Uh, I don't think I play any series on that right now. Oh, I do. Syria. The Syrian series is on that one. The only big change is the USSR. That's really it. Uh, the USSR has its old land back, so the Istan countries, Kazakhstan, for example, uh, Ukraine and stuff don't exist. That's the big change, but whatever. So for setting up a game, you simply click on one of these. I'll just go easy peasy global crisis. So this is just global crisis, your regular you know, sandbox, whatever. If you want to choose a region that isn't Germany, for example, in the Regions tab here, you simply go over whatever continent you want to go on, for example, North America. Your countries for North America come up, and you click on one, and it selects it for you. Uh, if you go on Europe, you'll have to scroll a little bit to find it. They're all labeled alphabetically, so it's not too, too hard, and you just click. It gives you a little bit of information about the countries. However, I don't see they don't seem to matter too, too much, because you can usually just build up whatever they're low on. And again, once we get into the production tab, we'll talk more about uh, negatives and positives for trade and etc. But uh, for right now, we uh, we won't worry about it. I, for this entire tutorial series, I'm just going to pick some random country. I'm just going to go with Italy. Italy has a fairly diverse economy and stuff. Uh, it's fairly easy to show off everything you really need to show off because Italy is quite easier that way. Now, if you go over to where the blurb is, and uh, where the flag and population and everything is, there is this. So this is your political leaning. If you click, you can go conservative, uh, moderate, so kind of in the middle, or fully liberal. This will affect your cabinet a little bit, depending on which way you go. Conservatives, for example, uh, if your ministers and stuff have control of stuff, they will spend a bit more on military, uh, whereas liberals will spend more on social spending. So, and the moderates kind of more or less even it all out. Um, you can disable the ministers though, so it doesn't really matter too, too much. So after you choose your nation, there is world volatility at the bottom. This is a big one. Probably the, one of the most important options you pick. So if you click on it, there's none, low, medium, high, very high. Essentially what this is, is how aggressive do you want everybody to be? So if you have it on none, very few, if any, wars will ever show up. Only a few of the very high influential uh, conflicts, such as North Korea versus South Korea will pop up, some Serbian conflicts sometimes, and Israel conflicts. They're the only ones that ever seem to show up on none. Low, same kind of deal. 
you might have a bit more conflict. Might The wars between those nations might be more aggressive. Medium, your usual conflicts are going to come up and a few others. High, usual conflicts and a few others, uh, but a few more. And very high generally is kind of, yeah, everybody just wars each other like immediately. Uh, very high is what I have most of my series on, so you can kind of see the conflicts and stuff that arrange through that. They're more combat oriented essentially when you select these. So if you select very high, countries will pour more into military than anything else. And if you have it on non, they'll pull more into uh, stuff like social spending. They won't uh, want to war. So fairly uh, straightforward that way. I usually have it on very high because that's just me, but for the sake of this, I'm just going to have it on medium. So if we click on the top here to the game settings, there's a lot of victory conditions. Personally, I like capital because it's easy. Uh, there's, you know, I have a clear objective and I'm not bouncing around islands for certain nations. Complete is a complete takeover of all a nation's land and towns, specifically towns. Sometimes the nations will surrender partway in if they have, you know, no money or no military or whatever. They will surrender, but a lot of the time they're pretty stubborn assholes and they won't. So, especially rich countries like Canada, they will have their capital in the very last city and they will never surrender. Capital is the better one. Like I said, capital is, you take their capital, you win. Uh, capture, kind of, sort of the same thing as capital. Uh, there's usually a vehicle that you have to capture or kill. Unification, I don't actually know. I, I played this mode to see what it was. Didn't really affect anything. Total score is just kind of your score. That one's more for, I find, multiplayer matches. Diplomatic score, econ score, tech score, same kind of deal. You just try to have the best in all of those in score. For example, tech, highest tech level, and you uh, essentially kind of win. They don't really do much, these ones, though. The scores, I find, are more multiplayer focused. The ones for single player, complete capital, capture, and unification. Those are the only ones that really matter too, too much. So if you come down to the game settings, into the settings here, I'm going to put that on capital. Um, actually, no, I'm not going to put it complete. So this is the initial game settings screen. So scheduled game end, you can have it none. And it just never ends. You can also put it all the way up to 120 months. So if you want to challenge yourself to do something, say I'm Italy, I want to challenge myself to take over France in 60 months. I can set it like that, set myself a little goal, and uh, go that way. Usually I have it on none, though, just so I can take over the whole world, but you can change it. Then there's military, economic, and diplomatic difficulty. These are all changeable from very easy to very hard. Now, military difficulty, very hard, means that their units are much tougher to kill. It's going to take you a lot more effort and more units to be able to destroy and maintain. Very easy, more or less, means you can send in a Vodnik versus an Abrams tank, and the Vodnik will probably win. That's essentially that. Taking over towns also becomes a lot easier on very easy. Uh, the garrisons and stuff are just a lot less tough, so you don't need as many units to go after a town uh, to take it over. I usually just leave it on normal. Sometimes I'll put it on hard, depending on the nation I'm playing as. If I'm playing as, like, the States or Russia, I'll probably put it on hard, just because otherwise it's just way too fucking easy. Uh, same with an economic difficulty. Very easy means that your economy is just going to go through the roof without, you know, doing anything at all. Pretty much from the start, you could just leave it. Um, I usually, again, have it on normal, because normal, I can just build stuff up, have myself self-sustaining, and then my economy skyrockets anyway. So you usually don't have to worry about it. Very hard is, well, really fucking hard. Trade deals are very hard to come by. You usually have to do it yourself and try to maintain your economy. It gets quite difficult, but it is challenging if you like that. Diplomatic difficulty... Eh, kind of matters, I guess. Uh, countries generally either hate you or love you anyway, but uh, very easy means that you can get peace with war, with nations warring you a lot easier or with paying less money to them. And very hard means that if they're warring you, you're pretty much fucked. So, essentially the main thing with those. Debt. So, starting with debt, starting without debt. You can check the box, uncheck it. Starting with debt means you're in so much debt to the UN, and you slowly pay it off if you can. Starting with no debt means nobody has any debt, which can make economies go absolutely haywire. It's kind of funny sometimes, because you'll watch economies like that are usually really good spiral into debt, or vice versa. Ones that spiral into debt go insane and take off. So, it's, it can be funny. Allied victories. Essentially, you and your allied Germany go after France, um, and if one of you takes it, 
considered an allied victory, you evenly split the country. So there's no, you know, uh, weird splits. It more or less just evenly splits it. Fixed capitals. If you have capitals on as a, as a mode, this doesn't appear. But essentially, you can check it on. Your capital can't move. If the capital is taken, uh, you lose. If you have it off, your capital can move. If your capital is taken, it will move to another city. or And you can move it yourself. So kind of interesting. Hot relations is the volatility on the first one. You've already probably set that, so just leave it alone. Start game without units. This is better for multiplayer matches because multiplayer matches are very laggy. Uh, however, in single player matches, unless your computer is like 30 years old, you should be okay. Uh, so, but if you want to challenge yourself to, you know, play as a nation and have no units, you can. Essentially checking that box, I would have no units when I loaded it in. Unchecking it, I have the normal amount of units. Pretty simple. Next tab. Military settings. Fog of War, I usually have this off. Basically, if you have it on, uh, you cannot see your uh, neighbor's military. The only way you can see it is if you become an ally with them. Same thing, if you go to war with them, you can't see their military. So it gives a bit of mystery. Uh, you know, It's really up to preference. Some people like to have that, some people don't. There's arguments either side for why you should and why you shouldn't. Entirely up to you if you want to have that. Enhanced spotting, basically, if you have Fog of War on especially, it can help you spot units at, uh, at more ranges and with air aircraft. Enhanced ranges, same thing. Uh, it just ups the range of sight of your units. That's pretty much all that is. Uh, units eliminated when region falls. You usually have that unchecked. Uh, essentially, if you kill a nation, take over a nation, if you have that checked, all their units just get destroyed. You don't have any units. Allow nuclear weapons. Pretty straightforward. Some nations have nukes, some don't. If you have that checked, they can use them. If you have it unchecked, they can't. Uh, and then there's nuclear weapon penalties. So essentially, if you use a nuclear weapon, the UN hates you or doesn't. You have it from high to low, depending on what you want. And last page here, scenario settings. So essentially, in the world, there are resources that you essentially, you know, exploit to kind of up your economy and make yourself self-sufficient and trade. You can have a standard or abundant or fucking nothing and see how you, you know, how you cope. Uh, that's kind of interesting if you try that. Essentially ends up like the fascist Italy mode where you have no money because uh, there's no real trade going on and you can't really fund stuff. It it's, becomes quite hectic. Uh, sp dwindling is even hectic uh, in its own. People will start warring each other just for resources. It's, it's interesting. Uh, I'd like to see a mod that uh, takes that a bit farther, but haven't seen one yet. Initial funds, same sort of thing as resources. Uh, you want a lot of funds, so a lot of high treasury. You want a, just a regular one, what they give you, low or nothing. So uh, that's, again, completely up to you. Approval effects, high, medium, low, so uh, approval stuff. Uh, do they do it a lot or don't they? Third-party relation, uh, relation effects usually just keep that on, that's really not too important. Critical United Nations is one that you might want to change. Uh, essentially, if you go to war with somebody that you don't have um, the justification to go to war with, say, you know, they didn't at they attacked your buddy, you have justification, uh, but if they're just like a peaceful nation just sitting there, you don't. So if you have that checked and you go to war with a nation that you have no justification, you'll get kicked out of the United Nations, they'll do sanctions on you, they'll pull support and all that kind of stuff. If you have it unchecked, you eventually will get kicked into the United Nations, but it'll take like a good five or so uh, wars to actually get kicked out. So it depends on how your play style is and uh, whether you care about the United Nations. They don't do too much for you. They do send you some resources uh, if you, you know, don't have any or money if you don't have any. But other than that, they're kind of useless. Allow government change. So every, I think it's four years, uh, if you have a nation that's a democracy or any kind of nation that can vote there will be a vote. Essentially what happens if you lose and you don't have high military approval, you lose. Uh, if you lose the election but have high military approval, you can uh, turn into a dictatorship. Uh, or if you just win the election, you win the election and get to go four more years. If you have that checked off, there is no votes. That's what that does. Random events. Low, medium, high, very high, none. Random events are like every once in a while it'll have on the message board again, which we'll show you in the next uh, video. Uh, you know, we found a surplus of oil hidden in some warehouse, you gain 100,000 barrels. That's what it is. That's random events. They can be good, they can be bad. You can lose oil, you can gain oil, you can lose coal, you can, you know, any resource, money, you can lose or gain. They are completely random. They usually aren't 
you know, game altering, but they can give you a boost if you are low on oil and they happen to find oil, or it can, like, halt you in completely if they lose a bunch of oil. It's, uh, I, I like to have them on. Generally not high or anything, because I think they'll just be too frequent, but once in a while, shakes things up sometimes. Kind of useful to have. But that's basically it. Once you've chosen all of the stuff that you want to do for your game, you just hit launch game, and it will launch into the game, and you can start playing. And in the next video, I'll start explaining the tabs that are on the bottom uh, left-hand corner of the screen, and the basics of how to play. So, you know, hooray, I guess. <laughs> I'm going to jumble this series in with my uh, old basics tutorial playlist, so I'll probably just put that back up on the main page, and you can also watch those as well if you don't want to watch a whole bunch of these videos, and you just want to jump in and play. Those videos are still fine, but these will give you hopefully a bit more in-depth. So, hopefully it works out. Thank you very much for watching, guys. I will see you all eventually. Peace.